I'm scared because she's leaving. She's got to get away from here. But I'm scared that she'll forget me, and I'm scared I'll disappear, that I won't be able to create or communicate without her. See, this may be the age of communication, but the causation for the cessation of all creation is not communication, but frustration from living in a world needing salvation. And our relation comes from flirtation, and our fixation with love, and not the formation of relationships. And I've been hurt before, but the perforations in my heart only serve to leak my lifeblood a little faster, to let the oxygen go and let the sun shine in so I can have a soul filled with light. The dark stuff drains to the bottom, the sand slips through the sieve, but the diamonds catch. And darling, you are a diamond, you sparkle, but you are tough as they come and better prepared than some for the times ahead. See. They told us we are the music makers, so I ventured out into the world unprepared, bloated with beauty and my ignorant innocence, and only to be shocked that the glittering lights that sparkled were electric fences that burned. I soon learned that coffee tasted like bitter truths and that I, with my dreaming and singing, was a pretty little fool. But you were too cool to conform. See, little kids have big imaginations. They are the dreamers of dreams. So it seems strange that we should say they grow out of it because as we get bigger, our minds get smaller and you feel like you're shrinking, like without thinking. Your mother put you in the dryer by mistake and now you're drowning in your favorite sweater. But we are not shiny little boxes, easily categorized. And they may be surprised to find that we, with our dreaming and singing, are library raiders and kitchen crusaders, discovering stories and creating flavors and you darling should pride yourself on your individuality but I am still afraid of the time when you will leave me because you are too big for the boxes but they are my home and sometimes it takes forever to write a letter because every word is screaming I love you I miss you don't leave me and they won't lie still on the page in this age of communication there is still so much I want to say so my soul of light in its shiny box lies in the prelude to my life. Open it. Inside is every hope, dream, desire, passionate fire, carbonated blood, crystallized fear. It's all here. My manic pixie dream, ambitions of glittering lights and midnight fights, nightmares I love too hard and too proud that I will drive away those I most want to be around, and my lingering princess daydreams, my bright-eyed blushing bid to bribe them. See, I've been trying to give you pieces at a time, poems, letters, art, so you'll carry a part of my soul with you wherever you go. A bride makes a vow, but a best friend does not. A best friend flits in and out of life like sunlight in curtains, but you're a diamond. And diamonds catch, don't they? A diamond goes on a ring when he's proposing to start a life together, but what is it that will tether us together when I'm here and you're there, my partner in poetry on an isle in the sea? And I know the seams on my soul are starting to show my desperation, but I say without exaggeration, we are the music makers. We are the movers and shakers on a runaway train, and since we can't stop barreling toward the future, I make you a promise in the infinite now. A vow. I vow to tell you the truth, so in all honesty, I think you're braver than me, and there are times I will be jealous, but I will never let my envy be anything more than complimentary. I vow to listen and to argue, to change my mind and debate, because a friendship in a state of stasis is nothing more than stagnant acquaintance. I vow not to protect you because you can take care of yourself, but to offer help when you need it, to offer guidance and advice because electric fences sure look nice when they sparkle, but I won't let you be burned by pretty lies. And I vow to love you ad infinitum because you are a diamond, and when you catch my light, we refract shards of rainbow, and as we move, the shards fly apart like a universe expanding, and I love you in every inch of it. I know you have an allergy to sentimentality, but if I want you to believe you can tell me anything, then I owe it to you to tell you everything. So maybe I have a fixation with love, but I am sick of not saying what I mean, and lovers aren't the only ones who deserve to be seen proudly worn on my heart and idealized in my art. 
I'm scared because you're leaving and I'm the one to stay, but I hope that as you're roving, you'll sometimes pass my way. Thank you. Okay, our next poem is uh, uh, untitled by Jasmine Baines from Westview Secondary. Round of applause, guys. I'm a painter, a writer, a singer, and a little bit of a history geek. I like Lord of the Rings and Star Trek, and I go to the library at least once a week. What I am not, though, is exceptional. And that's okay. I've come to accept my averageness amongst all these other exceptional individuals. I'm not exceptionally pretty, or an exceptionally good painter. I have a pretty voice, but, you know, nothing exceptional. I have a keen interest in history and love to learn about the exceptional beings throughout the pages of time. Knowing I will never be one of these exceptional humans. And that's okay. I've come to accept my averageness in a world that is anything but. And I used to think that there was something wrong with me. Why did no one appreciate my art? Why is no one complimenting my singing? I guess my writing isn't the kind they like to read, huh? I can ramble off random history facts off the top of my head. Like Joan of Arc was 18 when she died liberating France from England. Why? They thought her an exceptional witch. Amelia Earhart was the exceptional first woman to fly the Atlantic. HIV was only found on llamas until Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas. That is not quite so exceptional, but interesting all the same. To me, that is but not really the number one conversation starter. But I have come to realize that my averageness is exceptional. I am exceptionally average. I am an exceptional artist, considering where I was two years ago. I am an exceptional writer, for my kind of genre. I am an exceptional singer, if you like the sound of an iron seal. To the, I, am a, I am exceptionally pretty, and, and I'm an exceptional lover, to those who matter, and on my own terms. I am a cluster of dust, hydrogen, oxygen, calcium, and all the other elements that are in my making. And that, my friends, is pretty exceptional. Thank you. Our eighth poet from Westview Secondary School is Robert Gibson with his poem, To Beat the World at Its Own Game. Maybe it's the way the money felt in my hands. When I pulled the loose change out of my wallet and threw each coin, one by one, into the Russian River. And I made sure to enjoy the feeling of just letting each nickel go. And I made sure to enjoy the sight of each dime freely soaring. And I made sure to enjoy the thought of helping out each quarter, as though when it hit the water, I had taken away its burden. And it was almost as if the coins wouldn't sink, that they would just float along the river forever, now that I had set them free. And as the trees that stood all around me watched in horror, though a few of them I could hear in the back of my mind, slowly clapping their branches together as they watched me. See, these trees were the ones who understood the game that we all played. And then there were the few trees who had dipped their branches in the water, as if they were frantically searching the river for the lost change. But the change would never mean anything to me again. See, these, these trees, they were the ones who played by the rules. For the day I see the world in dollar signs, I have fallen victim to the real murderers of the world. Because today, as I sat on that rock, the very rock that said, had sat on the river, I accomplished what few men had before. I had beaten the world at its own game. 